All right, this video is on lesson three, which was our population lesson. Here are our objectives. When we're talking about population, first thing that we need to, to do is make sure we know what the definition is. So population is the total number of persons living in a specific area. So it might be in a country, a state, a city, uh, a small district, um, you know, it's, it's just that total number of people. We might look at total world population. A few more terms that we need to make sure that we do remember the difference between rural and urban. Rural means countryside, so that picture up here, this is a rural area. Urban means city, so there's your city. Population distribution is describing the way population is spread out. Demographers study populations of the world trying to figure out why population is distributed distributed the way it is. They're going to look at things like birth rates and death rates, um, look at reasons why people decide to live in certain areas. And things that can influence population, distrib population distribution natural resources. People tend to live where they have access to these natural resources. Climate is a huge factor in population distribution. If we look at the population of Canada, the majority of Canada's population lives within 100 miles of the U.S. border. And that's because the climate down in the southern part of Canada is so much nicer than the climate is as you go farther north in Canada. Economic development. Um, so if you're looking at uh, a country that is very economically developed, you tend to have a, a higher population um, because along with those economic developments, you have a lot of um, other things that tend to, to go along with it. So the higher your um, the higher your economics, your high, the higher your GDP, the higher your standard of living is, and that will increase your population. Government policy, we will definitely take a look at what China has done to try to slow down their population growth. Uh, it was called the one-child policy in China. It's now been relaxed to a two-child policy in China, uh, but it has definitely had some effects on, on the Chinese population, and we will definitely take a look at that further when we get to our population unit. Rural versus urban settlement. Um, ten, people tend to live closer to cities, closer in, to that urban area. There are a lot of different reasons for that. You have more services, things like hospitals and doctors and uh, police and fire uh, departments, those types of, of services. Um, there are more jobs, more uh, avenues of education. So you tend to have a, a heavier population in urban areas as opposed to those rural areas. Um, capital resources, transportation and technology, that kind of goes along with that economic development and that urban settlement. The more transportation and technology you have, the, the higher your population tends to be. Um, and then finally, conflicts that can affect your your population both positively or negatively. Uh, if you do have a conflict, you might have a lot of people leaving your country going into other countries. And on the, the flip side, if your country tends to not have a lot of conflict, you tend to have more people trying to, to uh, settle in there. Some of the other things that affect population, we'll take a look at it, these things, migration, immigration, and there should be another immigration with an E on there. We'll take a look at that. Push and pull factors and advances in agriculture, healthcare, and uh, things like disease and conflict. So as agriculture, as there were agricultural advances, as there are advances in healthcare, your population tends to get larger. If you have advances in agriculture, obviously you can feed more people. Um, if you have better health care, you know, once people realize that, hey, if we just wash our hands, uh, we're going to, to stop the spread of germs and we tend to be a lot healthier, people live longer, 
that can affect your population. That helps your population grow. Disease and conflict are some of those negatives that will decrease your population. Moving on to this idea of migration, immigration, and immigration. Migration just means movement. And in geography, we're looking at specifically at the migration of people moving from one place to another. There are two types of immigration, and they sound exactly alike, but they are spelled different. So immigration with an I is when people move into another country. So when you see I am, think in. Immigration with an E is when people leave their home country and move to another country. If you see EM, think exit. I for in, E for exit. Push and pull factors. This is one of the re ways that demographers explain this theory of, Im or do these explain immigration. Push pull is a theory and it explains immigration. So, um, Push factors are things that make people leave a country. So it might be that they're being bullied for their religion. They might not be able to find jobs. They might have um, a drought that causes an agricultural hardship. Um, and then there are pull factors. And those pull factors are those good things that will pull people into a country. So things like uh, better climate, better jobs, better education. And last year we came up with this idea of a cliff. So imagine if you're standing up here on the top of this cliff, cliff, whoops, you're standing up here on the top of this cliff and somebody pushes you off. Somebody pushes you off, that's a bad thing. If you have accidentally fallen off of this cliff and somebody pulls you up, that's a good thing. Pushed off the cliff is bad, pulled up the cliff is a good thing. Population distribution. Uh, this is a population distribution map. And the different from population distribution is population density. And population density is one of those things that the, this can lie to us. Um, so population density is just the average number of people who live in an area. So you take the number of people Divide it by the number of square miles, and that gives you population density. So why do I say that population density lies? If I'm looking at this map of the United States, here's New Jersey up here. The population density is 1,000 people per square mile. If I look just at New Jersey, now I see that, um, yeah, maybe it's not exactly 1,000 people every square mile, because if you look at this map down here, you see you have some heavier populations in the you know, over here closer to the coast, whereas the western part of New Jersey is much less densely populated. That is all we have for population. <laughs>